Annette Don Carver was a girl who disappeared in 1975. It's possible that she was a victim of Ted Bundy, or possibly another serial killer. She was reported missing, and the last time she was seen was at her school. Although certain details differ, some state she left campus during lunch, and others said that she was seen getting on the school bus. She most likely disappeared involuntarily based on her relationship with her family and her high grades. Ted Bundy later confessed to murdering her and dumping her body in the Snake River, but her remains have never been found. Bundy stated he raped and drowned Culver in a hotel room after kidnapping her. He did provide some convincing details, yet authorities did not fully accept his account. She disappeared a mere three weeks before he was arrested. It is also theorized her case could be related to a span of killings in the area, including the murder of Patricia Campbell and her friends. The murder took place in the 1970s and 1980s. Bundy has been eliminated as a suspect in those murders. Lynette had long, light brown hair and hazel eyes. She disappeared on May the 6th, 1975. She was 12 years old at the time, and um, she went missing in Pocatello, Idaho. She was white, female, 5 foot 2 and 110 pounds. She was last seen wearing a maroon jacket with a fur collar, a red checkered shirt, and blue jeans. So on the Doe Network, it just says Lynette Don Culver, last seen May the 6th, 1975. Culver is said to have left Almeda Junior High School on her lunch break and was last seen boarding a bus at Hawthorne Junior High School on the afternoon of May the 5th, 1975. Another report states she was last seen walking down Eldridge Road. She was never seen again. Foul play is suspected, and they do believe she was the victim of a homicide. Ted Bundy confessed to the abduction and murder of Lynette one week before he was executed in 1989. He knew details about her that only, he w that only someone would have known that had talked to her or had been around her. Culver would have disappeared three weeks before Ted Bundy was originally apprehended. He, dis he says he disposed of her body about 15 miles away from Pocatello in the Snake River. Um, the agency, investigating agency, is the Pocatello Police Department. The agency phone number is 208-234-6100. This is the story of Patricia Campbell. Patricia Campbell was a girl whose remains were discovered in Two Mile Canyon near Malad, M-A-L-A-D, Idaho, in 1981. Her partial skull was discovered in the same area in 1986. Her remains were identified via DNA in March of 2007. In October of 2021, the Oneida County Sheriff's Office partnered with a lab in order to identify her skull. She was identified in October of 2022. Patricia was last seen at Almeida, Alameda Park in Pocatello, Idaho, in July 22, 1978. The park was the location of a Pioneer Day celebration. Another girl, 12-year-old Tina Anderson, disappeared in the park that same day. The girls did know each other, but were not considered close friends. Some of her remains, along with the remains of Tina, were discovered on October the 15th, 1981. Patricia's clothing was also found at the scene. Tina would be identified soon later via dental records but the remains thought to be Patricia's could not be positively identified. I'm, a, I'm assuming that part of her skull was missing, maybe her teeth, so they were not able to get dental records for her. 
In the years following Patricia and Tina's murders, two other Pocatello girls would be abducted and murdered. Patricia and Tina were the first. 14-year-old Linda Smith was abducted from her home in 1981. Two years later, in 1983, 14 year old Cindy Bringhurst went missing while babysitting. Both girls' remains were discovered near Pocatello. The 1975 disappearance of Lynette Culver, a potential Ted Bundy victim, is also speculated to be related to these cases. Well, I had started out doing a story on Lynette, and Ted Bundy did confess to her murder but they were never sure if he did it or not. And um, the fact that these other girls were all right around the same age and all went missing right from the same area. Now, um, I don't know what years, 1981 and then 1983. So let me go through. I, I didn't come here to do a story on Ted Bundy. But you have to kind of give a little bit of a timeline on him since he did confess to this girl's abduction. So, after decades of denials, he confessed to 30 murders in seven states between 1974 and 1978. His true victim total is unknown. And... I did do a video recently on a little girl who was murdered. Well, her remains were never found. She went missing from her home in the area where Ted Bundy lived as a young boy. He he would have been a teenager, and he was said to have been delivering newspapers in the neighborhood where this little girl went missing, and he probably knew that area real well because he his uncle lived only a couple of homes away from where this little girl went missing and i believe the title of that video is uh, the first victim of ted bundy a lot of people believe that she was his first victim and probably not the only one between the time that she disappeared and his first known victim there were probably others over the years. And he was executed in 1989. So he would have been in jail. I don't believe that Ted Bundy was really responsible for any of these girls here. Because Pocatello, Idaho, 1978, was when Patricia went missing. And Tina. And then Linda in 1981, and Cindy in 1983. Lynette Culver had gone missing in 1975. Now, Ted Bundy might possibly have, could could have possibly been responsible for her disappearance, as he did confess to it, but they couldn't find her remains. And um, was he just questioned about her and just said yes um, it's very possible that this was a separate serial killer in that area. And all of these girls may have been the victim of this one particular person. On October the 26th, 1986, Patricia's partial skull lacking her lower jaw was discovered by hunters in the area. Um, let me go back just a little bit here. I'm going to go back and reread this part. Patricia and Tina were the first. Then in 1981, 14-year-old Linda Smith was abducted from her home. Two years later, 14-year-old Cindy Bringhurst was abducted while babysitting in 1983. 1975 disappearance of Lynette Culver, a potential Ted Bundy victim, is also speculated to have been related to these cases. So if they do believe her to be related to these cases, then they had to have ruled out Ted Bundy because he was in jail at the time that these last four girls were missing, went missing. On an unknown date, Patricia's unidentified remains were misplaced by police. 
with Pocatello Police and the Oneida County Sheriff's Office disagreeing on where the remains were stored. Um, examination of the skull indicated she died due to be, being repeatedly struck with a blunt object. Initial reports stated she was between 12 and 16, um, and they thought that she was biracial at the time when they were doing their examination of her skull. A 2006 examination would later indicate that she was white. The skull was misplaced by law enforcement and was unable to be located until it resurfaced in 2018. What in the heck was going on there? Why was this one girl's remains misplaced and then later her skull? Did somebody know something? Anytime that I hear of any, and, and, and I, we have to understand that sometimes, and keep in mind this was the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, before the use of DNA became really advanced. Um, unless they were moving from one lab to another lab to a storage unit to another storage unit, how did these uh, remains become misplaced or lost? So anytime I hear about something like this taking place, my uh, spidey sense or my you know conspiracy thoughts kick in and I start wondering, was someone in law enforcement involved or were, did they suspect somebody and they were covering something? In 2006, the Oneida County Sheriff's Office began a search for the unidentified remains. The remains were rediscovered in the department's evidence storage area. DNA testing was performed and they were confirmed to be Patricia's. It's been more than three decades since Pocatello Police Captain Terry Felsman helped to recover the body of Cindy Louise Bringhurst, a 14-year-old Alameda Junior High School student who vanished from an apartment where she was babysitting. Her body was discovered in the Mink Creek area a month later. Her cause of death was not mentioned, and they did not mention whether she was sexually assaulted. In cold cases, we never release that information. If someone confesses to the killing, we don't want them to be able to give details that they might have read about in the newspaper. Her parents are both now deceased, and she has one surviving sister. Cindy disappeared sometime between 11.45 p.m. on June the 4th uh, and 1.45 a.m. on June the 5th. So sometime between midnight and 2 a.m., she was babysitting and um, she was at an apartment at a in Highland Drive. The woman whose two-year-old daughter Cindy was babysitting for worked at the Oasis Bar. The woman's purse and keys were stolen that night and her name was not released, but the woman reported to investigators that she spoke to Cindy at 11.45 p.m. and everything was okay. When she returned home two hours later, she found her door unlocked, the television on, and Cindy was gone. The little baby was sleeping in a bed, in a crib bed in an, another room, and was unharmed. The woman called Cindy's parents after finding her gone. She believes that whoever stole her pocketbook knew where she lived and went to her apartment. Now, did they know that this girl was there babysitting by herself? Or did they go there simply meaning to either break in and steal something, or maybe they were going to go lay in wait for this woman to come home? Maybe their intention was to wait for her to come home and then attack her once she came inside, and then, then when they got there, they found this girl there and just took her instead. The police do believe that the stolen pocketbook is connected to Cindy's disappearance. I don't think that this is a coincidence. One week after her disappearance, an Idaho State Journal reported that a suspect 
had been identified in the theft of the purse. The male suspect's vehicle was searched and several items were collected, including a shirt, but the purse was never recovered and no one was ever charged. An FBI profiler also believed that the theft of the bag was connected. The profiler determined that the killer most likely knew Cindy or the woman who she was babysitting for. There was no sign of a struggle. This is what leads them to believe that this person knew Cindy and went to the apartment and just walks right through the door and she knew them so she wasn't screaming in fear or anything for the neighbors to hear. But then again, she could have been asleep. This person may have walked in and shocked her, surprised her. And she may have been asleep and he just went in and grabbed her. Um, there was nothing reported missing from the apartment or nothing out of place. And this what is what leads the police to believe that Cindy knew this person. A summer party was reported to have been going on in the Mint Creek area that night that Cindy went missing. And um, people who were at the party that night were interviewed and none of them were connected to Cindy. They didn't. None of them said that they ever saw her there, and nothing was found to connect her to this party. It's unknown whether Cindy was killed in the location where she was found or if her body was taken to that area and dumped. Her body was partially submerged, and some of the evidence had been washed away. The woman who she was babysitting for moved out of the apartment very quickly after Cindy disappeared, and um, the woman was not a suspect. Police also interviewed a man about to be released from prison who was a suspect in the disappearance of 14-year-old Linda Diane Smith two years earlier. Smith was abducted from her home on 8th Avenue, on June the 4th, 1981, and her skeletal remains were found a year later. Cindy was the fourth girl to be abducted and killed between 1978 and 1983. Felsman said several people have been interviewed and no one has been eliminated as a suspect in Cindy's case. Cindy's older sister, said that she hopes reviewing the case someone might remember some little detail anyone who has any information can contact captain terry felsman at 208-234-6127 with the Poc pocatello idaho police department 14-year-old Linda Diane Smith and her family had just recently moved to Pocatello, Idaho. At first, everything was going well. The Smith family lived on 8th Street, and the children had all began to settle into their new lives. Linda's mother was on welfare, and she was struggling to raise her three children. Pocatello was a small city, and they all felt safe there. However, on June 14, 1981, Linda Smith was abducted. That night, Linda had been babysitting her nine-year-old brother. Around two in the morning, an unknown man rushed into the home and grabbed Linda and dragged her out of her bedroom into his vehicle. Linda's brother, Ben, had witnessed the abduction, and he told the police what he'd seen. He described the unknown man that had pulled Linda into his vehicle. Ben told the police that he had heard muffled screams coming from the other room as well as a struggle he went out to check on linda and saw this man with his arms wrapped around her dragging her out of the house she was fighting back and screaming trying to get away ben ran around to the back of the house and tried to stop the man but he was pushed to the ground he shouted get away or you'll be hurt she was shoved into a van with flames painted on the side, and the man drove away quickly. Ben never saw his sister again. Ben Smith ran to a neighbor's house to ask for help. 
that they didn't have a home telephone. He described the man who took his sister as around 30 years old with dirty blonde hair. He had urgently described to police everything he could remember about the abduction. Unfortunately, the police refused to believe anything he had to say, and they dismissed the entire case. They insisted that Linda had run away from home and that there had never been a man. Linda had run away in the past, but it had only been one time, and she had stayed away for one day and then returned home. The fact that she had this history seemed to be enough for police to dismiss the story, and it was unlikely that they ever looked at Linda. It was, it was likely that the police had looked down on them because they were poor and living on welfare. This is from 2007. More than 25 years ago, Ben Smith, then nine years old, watched a stranger drag his 14-year-old sister out of the home and throw her into a van. Linda Smith's clothes were found a week later, scattered in a pit. And I want to say something real quick. This is my own thoughts. Just uh, It just popped into my head. The police lost the remains for a very long time of this other girl who went missing and whose remains were found but they lost her remains. And this is the same police department who dismissed this young boy telling them this horrible story of his sister being dragged away in the night as a liar and that he was covering up for his sister who had run away from home. These are the same police. Let me say this. It's been many years, 40 years, close to 40 years. So hopefully they have some new detectives working and maybe over the years they've really taken this into um a, a bit, they've taken it seriously since the remains have been found linda smith's clothes were found a week later scattered in a pit near interstate 15 four months after that in october of 1981 her skull her skull was found in a ravine i mean i don't know if you know I'm just thinking, had they gone looking that night, had they gone looking that day for this van, might they have um, found who the person was at least? Had they put out a, a bulletin, uh, you know, to be on the lookout for this van and a man driving it with uh, sandy, dirty blonde hair? Now, two detectives in this Idaho city say they are going to take another crack at trying to solve this case. In the police, there have been one or two people who have handled all the cases. I've read the entire case file, and so has he. We've come to the conclusion that we need to treat this as a fresh case. Uh, ben now lives with his own family in Brigham City, Utah. He said he's been skeptical of police looking into this case because of the way that they behaved the night his sister disappeared. After the van carrying her sped away that night, he ran to call the police, but he said police didn't believe him and dismissed the story and said he had made the whole thing up and was helping his sister to run away. It looks like they are actually committed to get to the bottom of this now, he says. Um, Kirk Nelson, a retired Pocatello police captain, said Linda's abduction is probably connected to other abductions and killings between 1978 and 1983. In a town this size, the odds of all these girls being abducted and killed by different people is astronomical, he said. The four others who disappeared were also all students at Alameda Junior High School. I would have started with all the teachers, the male teachers who worked in that school at that time, coaches, fathers of other students who had students in school at that time. That's one place I would have started. I continued doing some uh, searches for these women, these young girls rather, 
who were missing. And um, I come upon this story. This is an update. I couldn't really find anything on Tina Anderson. Everything that I found, um, well, there were contradicting stories. In one story, the, the two girls, she and uh, Patricia Campbell, went missing on the same day from the same location. So it was, and, and they were found, their bodies, their remains later were found near each other in the same area. So it was just assumed that they were taken by the same person and murdered by the same person. Some stories, some reports were that these were good, that these two girls were good friends, that they were together. Other reports say that they went to the same school, but were probably not really close friends. I don't know the details on that, as like I said, it contradicts, but this is a story that I came upon that is somewhat of an update. I'm going to um, read from this. This is from 2017. 12-year-old Tina Anderson and 15-year-old Patricia Campbell disappeared from Pocatello Al Almeida Park in July of 1978. Four years later, the girls' bodies were discovered in a remote area. In July 1978, two girls disappeared from Alameda Park. Uh, almost four decades later, the Oneida County Sheriff's Office said they were confident they solved the disappearance and the murder. They have not released any more details. Today, we discovered the cold case is no longer solved. In fact, the county prosecutor's office is handing the investigation back to the Sheriff's Office. The girls disappeared and their bodies were discovered in a remote area. Cody Brower, the, the Oneida County uh, prosecutor, says these victims have gone through a lot for a very long time. It's really hard to continue to drag them through this. I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about their families. Almost 38 years since the girls' disappearance, the Oneida County Sheriff's Office said in 2016 they solved the case and handed it to the county prosecutor, but no, file, no charges were ever filed. Circumstances have risen where some of the evidence that we had is no longer available. Now, was this when the remains were lost? Prosecutors wouldn't say what the circumstances were but they say the case is still open and they do have more than one suspect. Personally, I'm no expert, but I think I would, like I said in earlier, I would have started with teachers, any male teachers or the husbands of any female teachers that these girls had, any authority figure type, even law enforcement. I've said this before, when remains and uh, circumstances like this happen that uh, evidence goes missing, you become suspicious if there is a, an attempt at a cover-up of some kind. Um, I would have looked at coaches, bus drivers, anybody who might have been that these girls might have known and have considered to be trustworthy that maybe they would have gone with that person. Maybe they offered them a ride home, or maybe they asked for some help to go do something, and these girls trusted this person. I do believe, I personally, the police may disagree, I don't know, but I do believe that they were both murdered by the same person. So I went back, and I really looked for anything more on these girls, on these disappearances and murders. This was dated 2022. Um, in October of 1986, a hunter found the skull of an un unknown victim about 500 yards away from where partial remains of two teenage girls were found in 1981. This unknown skull was identified as a third victim, possibly of mixed race, 
according to experts in the 1980s. Last year, members of the Idaho Code Cases Facebook page donated the money to have forensic testing done and Dr. Samantha Blatt at Idaho State University played a vital role in this genealogy work. Um, I have permission from the Oneida County Sheriff's Office to announce the skull has been positively identified as that of Patricia Campbell. Patricia's mother and brother and sister have all passed away before hearing the news from this Alameda County or Alameda uh, Park. It was a an event that was called um, Pioneer Day. These girls were there and they disappeared that day. Both of them together disappeared and um, partial remains were found of both of them. Some clothing items were found. While Ted Bundy was suspected in at least one of the cases of Lynette Culver, I don't, I, I don't know. I would, if I had to guess, I would say that this was one perpetrator and I don't think it was Ted Bundy whatsoever. Um, there is a confession here from Ted Bundy. I'm going to read this. This is from the Charlie Project. Missing since May the 6th, 1975. She was 12 years old. 5 foot 2, 110 pounds. Lynette was last seen in Pocatello, Idaho. She left her junior high school on her lunch break and never returned. That afternoon, she boarded a bus at Hawthorne Junior High School bound for Fort Hall. She was never heard from again. Investigators initially believed she ran away. They began to suspect foul play as time passed and nobody heard from her. Serial killer Ted Bundy confessed to her murder shortly before his 1989 con uh, execution. He claimed he abducted her and took her to a hotel room at the Holiday Inn where he raped her and drowned her in the bathtub and dumped her body in the Snake River. Bundy reportedly provided personal details about Lynette in his confession. Lynette was the first of these girls to go missing. Three months before Bundy's arrest in July of 1978, 12-year-old Tina Anderson and 15-year-old Patricia Campbell disappeared. Their bodies were found in Oneida County, Idaho in October of 1981. 14-year-old Linda Smith disappeared in 1981 and was found in 1982, her remains, rather. The last murder was that of 14-year-old Cindy Bringhurst, who disappeared in June of 1983 and was found her remains were found a month later. All of these cases remain unsolved, and investigators have identified, haven't definitely linked them, but they would note that it would be unusual for five girls in the same age group from a very small city to disappear within an eight-year span. Police are hoping that new forensic technologies such as DNA will be able to help solve these murders and find Lynette's body. Lynette was the youngest of three children, and uh, she had a good relationship with her family. She was only in the seventh grade and was considered a normal preteen, and she remains listed as a missing person. As far as I know, as I'm closing out this video, there has been no other update. The case was very similar to the 1978 kidnapping and murder of Kimberly Leach, age 12, who Bundy was executed for murdering. He told us he had come to Pocatello to commit murder, he said. 
Bundy did not know the girl's name, but clearly remembered picking her up. Among other things that he told the police, Bundy knew the girl's family had recently moved from one side of the town to the other. Her parents worked on that side of town. Because a witness had reported seeing Lynette hitchhiking the day she disappeared, and because Bundy had time to talk to the girl, authorities speculate he didn't force her into his car. Bundy gave an attorney general's investigator several details of what he did to the girl. He said that Bundy told him that he described the river where he threw her body in was 15 to 20 miles north of Pocatello. Lynette's body has never been found. Bundy also told that he picked up a girl hitchhiking on a freeway near Boise, Idaho in 1974 as he was on his way to Salt Lake City. He said he strangled the girl and he thought her to be around 16 years old. He threw her body into a river. Investigators found no missing persons reports that matched the girl's description. Well, was she a Native American? Because if you do your research and you find that many, many indigenous Native girls and young women who go missing, who went, especially during that time, who went missing, and even still today, there are many who are missing who haven't really been investigated, you know, very much. But I'm going to end on this note. I'm just going to say that as of right now, these hits, there's a possibility that Ted Bundy was responsible for this woman's or this 12 year old girl for her disappearance, for her murder. Her body's never been found. There's no evidence that she's dead. Um, she's never come forward to say she's still alive, and no one's ever heard from her. So I would guess that she probably is dead. Whether Ted Bundy was responsible for it or not remains unknown. And the other girls who went missing not too long after her were all, you know, their remains were all found. Uh, so I don't know if these cases are all linked or not, but I just wanted to do this story, tell this, and I appreciate everyone for watching. And if I find any more information later on any of these cases, I will come back and do a follow-up. Thanks for watching.